Thank you, Marissa. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Katrin. Okay, as uh, just introduced by Marissa, and I will take over the session now. Okay, so I will start with today's uh, TT session. Okay, so today my topic is artificial intelligence and computer vision, an old concept that changed the world. Okay, so why do I say old concept? Okay, you will know a, a bit more okay, later on when I talk about the background of AI, artificial intelligence. So today the webinar content uh, consists of these main three components. Okay, first I'll talk a bit about AI itself. Okay, then I'll talk about what is computer vision, okay, being an extension of uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, then lastly I'll talk a bit about uh, the applications of both deep learning, okay, which is part of AI, okay, and computer vision. AI, as I mentioned just now, is a very old concept. Okay. So take a uh, just take a notice about this quote. Okay, can machines think? Okay, so this quote, okay, is by the very famous computer scientist, okay, Alan Turing, okay, in 1950. Okay, so a bit about Alan Turing, he is a computer scientist, a brilliant mathematician. Okay, he has made a great contribution on the development of computer itself okay so some some people even call him the founding father of modern computers and he also made contribution in even world war ii okay which he helps to decipher uh, german army's messages okay encrypted messages okay also using computers okay so he is a brilliant uh, computer scientist one day he come up with uh as he as he move along with uh, you know, computer technologies, okay, he start to ask himself, uh, you know, back in the 50s, because computer is not really, uh, it doesn't do much, right? Okay, so back in the 50s, the so-called computer, what they do is just doing some uh, hardwired tasks, okay? So a calculator is a very good example, okay? After that, he start to think that, uh, what if computer can actually sort of, uh, behave like a human, okay? In the sense that, can computer start to think, right? Can computer start to think? And this question pops up in his mind, okay? And he start to uh, do research about that. Okay, he start to go deeper and deeper and deeper, okay? That is during the 50s, okay? And that is 70 years ago, right? 70 years ago. Uh, more about Alan Turing, okay? Some fun fact, okay? Uh, I'm not sure whether you all heard about the Turing Award before, Okay, Turing Award. So Turing Award is also in honor of Alan Turing. Okay, Turing Award is considered the Nobel Prize of Computing. So Alan Turing, okay, he's, he started the idea of can a machine, okay, mimics a certain degree of human intelligence. Okay, and this really marks the beginning of artificial intelligence itself. Okay, so here we have a chart about the history of artificial intelligence. Okay, so the first one, as we see, the time when it all started, okay, it all started with Alan Turing, okay, having the idea of whether machines can think. In 1955, okay, John McCarthy, okay, he also start to, uh, he start to be interested in this topic as well, okay. So he, he brought along with other computer scientists, okay, even Alan Turing himself, okay, all of them started to do research and they all finally written a research paper okay which is about artificial intelligence and that is when the term artificial intelligence being introduced okay in 1955 okay so back then uh, all about uh, is just a uh, computer science theory okay about artificial intelligence okay uh, the problem is there is no technology advanced enough to execute all these theories, okay? So that is why uh, artificial intelligence is not really a popular thing, okay? In back in the early days, okay? However, okay, in 1974, okay, when we start to have modern computers, okay? When, uh, sorry, is someone in the message? Sorry, I'll uh, resume. Uh, let me resume to. All right. Okay, so in 1974, that is also when Industrial Revolution 3 is taking place. 
right? Okay, IR 3.0, okay? IR 3.0, okay, when, and when modern computers starts to be popular, okay, and it starts to implement computers into the industry. And that is when artificial intelligence start to see development, okay, and popularity as well. And that really, uh, uh, the popularity starts to uh, rise, okay, in the 80s, okay? which what they call the year of artificial intelligence, okay? So in the mid of 1980s, that is when uh, a lot of computer scientists starts to research deeply, okay, in the artificial intelligence field, okay, in machine learning, okay? Even starts to research in deep learning, okay? So deep learning is also a very early concept, as you can see, okay? So in uh, if not mistaken, in 1986, okay, uh, that is when artificial neural network starts to be introduced, okay? And AI just becomes more and more popular, okay, from, from that point onwards, okay? In the early 2000s is where we can see uh, AI, okay, leaving a landmark in our modern, uh, in our modern society, right? Okay, we see this, we start to see the applications, okay, the results of this AI. So a bit, about the timeline of the development of artificial intelligence, okay? So back in the 60s, okay, uh, in the 60s, 70s, um, when Industrial Revolution 3.0, okay, Industrial Revolution 3, okay, was becoming, uh, was a thing, right? Okay, those times the computer, right, uh, they are advanced enough to execute uh, complicated tasks, right, okay, but they are still not uh, advanced enough uh, to do what uh, to do what the computer uh, nowadays that can do, okay. So back in the 60s, in the 70s, okay, all the, what the computers does is just uh, what we call naive algorithms, okay. Basically, these are just uh, hard programmed uh, algorithms, okay, that just allow machines to keep on repeating certain tasks, okay? That's why the term that I repeat, okay? So that is the very early stage of AI, okay? I repeat, okay? Then after that, computer scientists start to research, okay? About whether uh, a machine can start to mimic human, a certain level of human intelligence, okay? And that is when the step two comes in, okay, in the early, in the 60s, 70s, okay, until even uh, the 2000s, okay, and here you can see the term I imitate, okay, so this is referring to machine learning, okay, whereby a machine, okay, can can uh, can learn from experience, okay, so this experience is about Okay, uh, like when the computer taking some data, okay, and then it can learn from this data, okay, and then uh, update its own knowledge base, okay. So we start to see a machine that can update itself, that can learn, kind of like human, right? We read books, okay, we gain new knowledge, okay, and that is machine learning, okay. However, machine learning, uh, still has certain level of limitations, okay? Uh, they are not like exactly like human brain, okay? Like we can have a very high level of thinking, okay? Machine learning is still not capable of that, okay? But however, in the, uh, in the early 2010s, okay? Even until recently, okay? This is when we start to see a rapid development in deep learning, okay? So deep learning, is a subset of machine learning, uh, which also I believe Leon has mentioned yesterday before, okay? So deep learning is a subset of machine learning, okay? Whereby actually it allows machines to uh, have like a certain higher level of uh, learning abilities, okay? So the problem with machine learning is, uh, later I will talk about certain limitation on machine learning and why deep learning is like a consequence of uh, the development of machine learning, right? Okay, but here just bear in mind that in the 2010 and until recently, 
we have the rapid development and also even uh, a wide uh, a wide implementation of deep learning okay in throughout the industry okay commercially and uh, even you can see some example around you okay and then until very very recently okay like like when we talk about 2018 and until now okay and even in the future okay we have the step four which is deep reinforcement learning okay which is even uh, a more advanced level of artificial intelligence okay where machines can learn uh, from a higher level from it even can learn from a higher degree okay it's a higher level of learning ability in uh, for the machines okay then we have uh, in the future uh, uh, recently we have a few research about uh, swarm deep reinforcement learning okay, which is like an even more advanced level of deep reinforcement learning okay so those are just still in theory okay still like in the phase of research okay but in the future i believe uh, soon you will see some application with uh, the swarm deep reinforcement learning okay but here uh, I would like you all to take note on what is being highlighted here. Okay, so this, uh, which is the step three, okay, the deep learning portion. Okay, so uh, take a closer look at the timeline. Okay, 2010 to 2018. Okay, so during this time, another uh, major event has occurred. Okay, a major breakthrough, I would say. Okay, and that is industrial 4.0. Okay, so they are not coincidence, right? Okay, the, the development in deep learning and the introduction of industrial revolution 4.0. Okay, so here actually artificial intelligence is one of the main driver of IR 4.0. Okay, so in the slide just now, okay. You can also say that uh, advanced artificial intelligence, okay, such as deep learning, okay, and IR 4.0, okay, they are in a relationship of like a cause and effect, okay, whereby AI is the cause, and then IR 4.0 is the effect, okay. Let's take a look at IR 4.0, okay. So uh, when we talk about IR 4.0, we normally talk about the nine major pillars, okay. Augmented reality, system integration, cloud computing, okay, big data, which is mentioned by Leon, okay, yesterday, big data, IoT, 3D printing, cybersecurity, autonomous robot, and simulation, okay, so these nine pillars, okay. So which of these pillars do you think AI has involved? Okay, so mainly we can see, uh, this four that we can obviously see AI is being uh, is being involved. Okay, actually other fields there is also a certain level of artificial intelligence involved. Okay, but we talk uh, now we just talk about the obvious one. Okay, so IoT, big data, cloud computing, and autonomous robot. Okay, okay, so um, uh, AI. Okay. Nowadays is already all around us, okay. So how do we uh, uh, how do we notice that AI is actually all around us? Okay, very simple. Just ask yourself this question, okay. Has ever a machine helped us to make a decision, right? And I reckon that the answer should be yes, right? Okay. I believe everybody has been influenced by machine before okay because when we talk about making decisions okay uh we will normally like think about wait all we do is okay like we make the decision ourselves we don't rely on other people to help us make decision right but the truth is uh in reality machine has helped us make decision in a lot of ways okay so i'll give you a very obvious and simple example okay which is gps right gps gps is a very good example okay like when we don't know where what place to go okay we just 
open our GPS and the GPS will point us where to go, right? So there we have one machine already like telling us what to do, right? Okay, so AI has, uh, I would say is in a very, uh, in a popular stage now. Okay, so in cloud computing, we have AI, you know, handling the distribution of cloud networks. Okay, the big data, okay, a big portion of big data is about data analytics, right? And I believe uh, in the yesterday presentation by Leon, he talked about data analytics as well. Okay, and a big portion of data analytics is using AI, right? Using AI to do the uh, to do the data analysis. Okay, then we have IoT, okay, IoT which consists of smart devices, right? All these smart devices, they all uses AI. Right, they all have AI capabilities. Okay, to help this uh, device to make decision. Okay, to communicate with other IoT devices. Right, and then uh, the next thing we have the autonomous robots. Okay, so a big difference with autonomous robot and automatic robot is automatic robots. Okay, uh, uses some naive algorithms. Right. Okay, so automatic robots, what they do is just keep on repeating the same task. Okay, however, autonomous robot is much more advanced than that. Okay, autonomous robot, okay, can respond to environment, okay, and make decisions so that the task that they do can uh, can change. Okay, depends on what hap what's happening in the surrounding environment. Okay, whether like uh, an operator uh, is like asking the robots to like do some other stuff. Okay, or maybe like in a in a manufacturing industry, okay, if like a different part is being fit into the robot, okay, and the robot will automatically respond and uh, do different tasks, okay. So all these uses AI, right? Okay. Next. So this chart, uh, sorry, this Venn diagram, I believe uh, Leon has shown you before as well, okay. So this is about uh, this just want to clarify about. The, a few jargons that I have keep on using uh, interchangeably, okay, uh, throughout this talk, okay. First is AI, again, machine learning, then deep learning, okay. So as you can see, AI is the superset, okay, for both machine learning and deep learning, okay. So AI is the outer picture, right, okay. And AI is all about whether, uh, it's about the study of whether we can mimic a certain human intelligence or human behavior, okay, use uh, with machines. Okay, the next we have machine learning is a subset of AI technique, okay, which consists of uh, a series of statistical methods, okay, to allow machines, okay, to uh, improve its experience, okay. So there is a certain level of learning there, okay. But do note that you can see the word statistical methods, okay. So that itself uh, will tell you that machine learning has a degree of limitations there, okay? And that is when deep learning start to step in, okay? Deep learning being a more advanced uh, kind of machine learning, okay? Whereby what they do is they use a multi-layer neural network, okay? I'll talk about neural network later. And this neural network has a higher degree of flexibility compared to machine learning. Okay, and they can learn in a higher degree compared to machine learning. Okay, so next, I will talk about why uh, why machine learning uh, has a certain limitations. Okay, and how it how it bring forward uh, deep learning, right, into uh, today's picture, right? Okay. The first limitation for machine learning, okay, is the limitation in making decision from complex data, okay. So that comes, uh, that is because of the nature of the algorithm of machine learning, okay. So this algorithm, uh, they are not designed to let the machine handle complex data, okay. So that is one problem, okay. And the second problem, which is machine learning requires uh, human intervention in feature extraction. 
Okay, so what is feature extraction? Uh, let uh, we see the picture as an example. Okay, let's see the picture as an example. So the picture is about a simple classification task. Okay, whether see whether we can identify whether like the uh, one incoming image is a car or not. Okay, to identify a car, right? We need to see uh, a certain basic features from the car, right? Okay, for example. Uh, whether we see the wheels or like the shape of the car okay the edges okay whether we see we see whether we have windows all these basic features okay so in traditional machine learning algorithm okay we need the, the computers uh, like the computer scientists uh, themselves to define what kind of feature uh, that the algorithm is expecting Okay, so that is the limitation they are talking about there. Okay, and deep learning doesn't have that, uh, doesn't have this uh, limitation. Okay, so the limitation, okay, you can remember it with two keywords. Okay, so the two keywords are decision boundaries and feature engineering. Okay, so these are the two limitations they are keeping uh, machine learning from being uh, more prominent okay and as a consequences we see the uprising of deep learning okay so now we'll talk about deep learning so what is deep learning so deep learning is all about neural network okay and what is neural network okay a neural network is basically a network okay of nodes okay and these nodes we call it neurons Okay, so this is also quite a, an early concept, okay, introduced by a computer scientist in the 80s, okay, 1986, when they start to uh, introduce artificial neural network. Okay, so these nodes, uh, we call it neurons because it actually simulates how human neuron works, okay, how human neuron works. Okay, and and all of you should know that uh, actually human neurons is like uh, like what makes up our brains, right? Okay, what makes up our brains. And computer scientists managed to come up with a mathematical math mathematical model, okay, for neurons, okay. And from that on, we see a rapid development of neural network. Okay, what they what they start to do is okay. Uh, first they just have like okay, uh, one neuron, right? And then they start to they start to uh, research. Maybe we can use a network of this neuron, okay? And this network neuron can uh, perform tasks that even machine learning like even uh, those tasks that machine learning finds it difficult to handle, okay? So uh, the example picture there shows a very simple artificial neural network. Okay, so this is a very simple artificial neural network, which is three layers. Okay, so this neural network uh, is all about, again, deep learning. Okay, that's a learning word itself. Okay, so uh, when you think about it, what is learning? Okay, learning is all about, first, recognizing patterns. Okay, and then second thing is making deduction from these patterns. Okay, and just so nice, Deep learning, okay, or should I say neural network is very good at it. It's very good at doing this, okay? And this is why deep learning is gaining popularity uh, during that timeline, okay? So during the 80s, uh, we start to see the development of deep learning, but it's still not so popular, okay? Because deep learning is much more computationally complex compared to the traditional machine learning algorithms. And the problem is the computer technology during that time is still not advanced enough to handle uh, the implementation of deep learning. Okay. And this is why in the previous uh, in the previous slide, okay, when I show the timeline of AI, okay, we only see the uh, like the the rapid uprising of deep learning during the early 2010, okay, because that is when computer science and technology has advanced far enough for the computers to handle uh, 
to handle deep learning models. Okay, to handle deep learning models. Okay, so deep learning is basically one step closer to how to imitate how we human thinks. Okay, by using uh, this uh, this very clever engineered uh, algorithm. Okay. So in deep learning, there are mainly three types of neural network. Okay. So these three types are the very uh, like the it's like the backbone of deep learning. Okay. First is artificial neural network, which I have talked about before, is a concept introduced in the early 80s. Okay. Then in the early 2000s, we see the introduction of convolutional neural network. Okay. I purposely highlighted, uh, purposely put this in bold. Okay, because this is highly related to computer vision. Okay, it's highly related to computer vision. Okay, just take note. Okay, then we have recurrent neural network. Okay, and I'll explain what each uh, artificial neural network does. Okay, so uh, the image on the right shows the architecture of the neural networks. Okay, uh, the image is very big. Okay, so that's why uh, I have no way to fit the entire image nicely for uh, clearly in this slide okay but you can refer to the image source later on okay but essentially artificial neural network is basically you have a series of nodes together okay and all these nodes they are carrying out one function okay so in the artificial neural network case okay if you still remember what uh leon has talked about it before uh, some traditional machine learning algorithm right such as linear regression logistic regression okay so just imagine each of the nodes is carrying out one linear regression or logistic regression task okay and then you have this series of nodes doing all these tasks together and that is how neural network is better than traditional machine learning algorithms because they're essentially uh, doing much more compared to machine learning okay so that is artificial neural network and then convolutional neural network has been introduced because artificial neural network is not so good in handling uh, images. Okay, and that is when they start to introduce convolutional neural network, which they utilizes uh, what we call convolutional layers. Okay, and these layers contains what they call filters or kernels. Okay, filters or kernels. Uh, this one is a term commonly used in image uh, image processing. Okay, so image processing again is related to computer vision. Okay, so these filters helps the neural network to handle image very well, and it see a very large success in doing so actually. And later on, we will see uh, what kind of applications uh, we have for deep learning, right? And then we have uh, next we have the third network, third types of neural network, which is recurrent neural network. Okay, recurrent neural network. So recurrent neural network is a net, uh, is a type of neural network that can handle sequential data well. Okay, so what is considered sequential data? Okay, first is languages. Okay, very easily languages. Okay, we have multiple of word chained together okay and the chaining of words they are often in a fixed sequence right like like what i'm speaking now okay language you don't just like jumble up random letters or words together right okay it has a certain sequence and patterns okay so language is a very good example of uh, sequential data okay and the second sequential data is also very common and i believe some of you uh, already have some experience about it okay which is time series data right time series data okay so basically any graph with the x-axis as time okay they are considered time series data okay very good example is you know stock market price okay you always see the graph you know whether the market is bull, uh, bearish or bullish you no know? but in the end all those graphs you can see the x-axis is always time okay and those kind of data, uh, this recurrent neural network can handle very well. 
okay uh, what kind of uh, tasks uh, RNA can do uh, I will talk about it later on. right okay so now I'll do a quick demo about uh, this uh, using deep learning okay so this URL I will post it uh, in the chat so that you all also can try out yourself okay let me just copy this link okay so now let's move on to the uh, to this uh, short AI demo okay I just showcase a very simple application for uh, using deep learning. Okay, so what I'm going to showcase is just very basic image classification. Okay, so now let's. Uh, I need to switch my screen. Hold on, yeah. Right. I hope everyone can see the uh, website, okay, Teachable Machine. Okay, so this is uh, like a fun website that you can uh, like test out very simple uh, AI. Okay, so now let's move on with uh, like the, the demo of this Teachable Machine, okay. So just click on get started okay you bring us to three kinds of project here okay so image project audio project and post project okay so i'll choose image project okay standard image model and for this uh i'll need to off my webcam first okay because this website needs to use my webcam okay so here we can see here uh, we are trying to train a model that can classify you know different classes of images okay now let's try that okay so class one let's just say i want uh, the model to classify myself okay okay the second thing is maybe we want the model to classify some other things okay uh, let's see what do i have around me okay, i have a water bottle so let's try water bottle Okay, now, okay, deep learning, okay, just like machine learning, is all about learning from data, okay, and so we need to fit in some data. So we are using the webcam feature here, okay, myself, so I will, uh, okay, record, oh. okay, that's a duplicate, okay, maybe from the side. On the right. Okay. And then up. Uh, okay. Right. Just maybe just like these four images. Okay. And the second thing, water bottle. Okay. Maybe put in different angle, sideways. Okay, maybe in a slanted manner. Maybe slant this way. Okay. Okay. And once we have sufficient input data, we will just feed the data into the model, and the model will do the training. Okay. So I believe. Uh, this teachable machine is using a uh, deep learning model okay and so we train the model and then later on we will see uh, the result right okay so here we have two classes okay myself and water bottle okay you can see here myself is 100% okay the classific the probability is 100% 
Now when I bring my water bottle in, you can see, okay, it's classified as water bottle, okay. So this is a simple demonstration of how deep learning works, okay. So this, um, well, the Teachable Machine website, they didn't really say the, like, how, uh, what kind of model they use, but I strongly believe it's using a convolutional neural network. Okay, for this image project. Okay. So this is a short demo. So I hope uh, you all have like a better insight of like the capability of deep learning. Okay. So here I just have four image. Okay, for each classes on and the model can already like differentiate between these two very well. Okay, so that is the power of deep learning. Okay, so I'll go back to my slides. Uh, let me just go back and go back to my slides. Okay. Oh, this is wrong. Sorry. Okay. So now, uh, we know uh, about AI. Okay, as well as the difference between machine learning and deep learning. Okay, now we move on to computer vision. Okay, computer vision, okay, which some people call the eye of computers. Okay, so computer vision is another field of artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, it's not like the relationship between machine learning and deep learning. Okay, uh, Computer vision, okay, they do have some intersection with computer vision and uh, machine learning and deep learning, okay, but computer vision is also like another uh, individual field, okay, individual uh, field of study, okay, and it's all about teaching a computer to understand images and videos, okay. Uh, this is basic, uh, this is uh, just for info, it's a very watered down explanation okay a very layman explanation okay but just one uh, one thing i want to take note i uh, want, want you all to take note is okay deep learning okay uh, by now is heavily involved in computer vision already okay and this is especially true with the implementation of convolutional neural network okay so Right, so what are consider computer vision? Okay, so here I'll show you a few computer, a very common computer vision tasks. Okay, which kind, which kind of generalize like what computer vision is doing. Okay, so first thing is image classification. Okay, so this one again is just like the demo. Okay. Zoom it, sorry. Okay, so this one just like a demo. Okay, so the demo is actually we are doing this image classification. Okay, and this is also part of computer vision. Okay, and you also can say is well, it's also uh, part of deep learning. Okay, because it's using a neural network, right? Okay, so you can see uh, there is a tight integration between computer vision and deep learning okay so there's a great intersection area between these two uh, fields of ai 
Okay, then the second thing is object detection. Okay, so it's like a more advanced type of image classification whereby if you fit one image, okay, they can identify what kind of object is inside this image. Okay, so as shown in this example, okay, you have a dog, you have a bicycle, you have a car. Okay, and this is like a uh, like one level higher than image classification. Okay, then thirdly, we have image segmentation. Okay, this is also one of the, uh, like I would say, basic tasks of computer vision. Okay, and this also plays an important role in today's uh, computer vision application. Okay, later on, I'll talk about it. Okay, so the difference between object detection and image segmentation is, okay, what image segmentation do is for each pixel, okay, I can know what object it belongs to, okay, that is down to pixel level, okay, as you can see in the image here, okay, this example image, the top one, okay, shows the original image, the down shows the segmentation image, okay, you can see the red color is the car, okay, so each pixel I can know like which pixel belongs to car, okay, then you can see which pixel belongs to the road, which pixel belongs to the sidewalk, right? And which pixel belongs to the houses, okay? And which pixel belongs to the trees, okay? And this, uh, this image classification, object detection, image segmentation, okay? All these computer vision tasks, they are used in a very wide application and used in different application, okay? And then the next task is face recognition, all right? So here you might argue that, wait, wait a minute. Face recognition is just like object detection, right? All I need to know is just detect faces, okay? But here's the thing, okay? Uh, if you think about it, all human faces, okay, share, well, similar features, okay? We have eyes, we have nose, we have hairs, we have teeth, we have mouth, right? Okay, if you just use uh, object detection, Okay, what it can do is just, okay, I know it's a human face. That's it, right? Face recognition brings it to the next level, okay, whereby we can identify whose face is this. Okay, whose face is this? And this is achieved by looking at like uh, some facial landmarks, okay? Facial landmarks and uh, specific facial features. Okay, so face recognition is basically like a next level of face detection. Okay, you have face detection, then you have face recognition. Okay, so these are just a few examples of computer vision tasks. Okay, so by now I hope you have a clearer picture about computer vision. Okay, next I'll talk about applications of deep learning and computer vision. Okay. So do note that since deep learning and computer vision has a great area of intersection, okay, that means there are applications, okay, you see the application of deep learning, actually, you can apply it to computer vision as well. So that is maybe one, like, one, one thing you will notice, okay. But I, I try to, like, not to, uh, I try to, like, separate them, okay, in, in these slides, okay. So deep learning applications, okay. One major part of deep learning applications, which you see all around now, okay, is natural language processing, okay. Natural language processing is about how computer understand languages, okay. Teaching computer how to understand languages. It's not an easy task, actually, right? Okay. Last time before the uh, before the introduction of deep learning, okay, there is actually like a development in natural language processing using traditional machine uh, learning methods, okay? But their results are not so great, okay? But with deep learning, okay, it sees a massive improvement, okay? And what application we have here, okay? A very good example is in your smartphone, okay? Like when you message other people, okay? When you, when you have a typo, okay? Uh, uh, the word that the, the wrong word automatically be highlighted to you okay and 
like the correct word will generate for you, okay? You might think that, wait, this simple thing, right? Okay, but the problem is uh, actually the reality is natural language processing is like not as simple as you think, okay? Not simple as you think, okay? So spelling check is one of the example of natural language processing, okay? Spelling check and autocorrect, okay? Autocorrect, which I believe all of you should know what it is, okay? Search autocomplete, okay, is about, you go Google search, okay? You type a few words, and then there's like a more selection for you, okay? Like, for example, in the in the example here, okay? This one, again, how do computer know what we are trying to find, okay? Again, it's using natural language processing, okay? And it's able to, uh, like, give you, like, quite an accurate recommendation. It's all because of the implementation of deep learning, all right? Okay, then the last thing, of course, you have virtual assistant, okay? Such as Alexa and Google Assistant, okay? You ask yourself, how do, how do Alexa and Google Assistant manage to understand our words, okay? And again, it involves natural language processing, okay? And of course, when you talk about, uh, uh, when you talk about Alexa and Google Assistant, actually there are more uh, there are more deep learning applications involved. Okay, for example, okay, how how Alexa like recognizes uh, what we say. Okay, so that is what they call uh, a speech to text uh, processing. Okay, speech to text, and that is also again involve uh, deep learning. Okay, specifically you no know, RNN. Okay, then second thing, we, after you get the text, then you do further natural language processing so that the, uh, the Alexa understand what we are actually saying, right? Okay, so virtual assistant, we might like take it for granted. We just use it every day, but actually uh, in the background, okay, the, the working of virtual assistants is actually very complicated, okay? Okay, with deep learning application is prediction. Okay, so here I will just uh, like quickly brief, brief it to you. Okay, so in machine learning, normally uh, we say we are uh, the, the domain of problems is classified into two. Okay, one is classification problem, one is regression problem. Right, classification problem is all about identifying whether it's A, B, or C. Okay, and then regression is about whether we can uh, we can come up with a value, okay? We come up with a certain value, okay? So prediction here is about, of course, the regression side of thing, right? And of course, this one prediction actually, uh, some machine learning algorithm can actually do it quite well, okay? But of course, with deep learning, okay? Again, deep learning with the introduction of deep learning, uh, there are some prediction that deep learning can do even better compared to machine learning. Okay, because uh, again, machine learning is limited by uh, like you cannot fit two data that are too complex. Okay, but uh, deep learning can do so. Okay, so. A uh, very good example of prediction with deep learning is stock market, okay? If you Google search about it, okay? Deep learning with uh, deep learning prediction in stock market, you will see a lot of example, a lot of example. And they actually saw certain degree of success, okay? But of course, uh, don't try to rely on like this prediction too much, okay? Because stock market is not limited just by the technical analysis itself, right? Okay, it's influenced by a lot of other factors, which again, deep learning might not be uh, taking into account, right? Okay, but this is one of the application, okay? And the second thing, weather forecast. Okay, weather forecast is another prediction task, okay? 
And then the next thing is election prediction. Okay. So a very good example is the recent uh, US election. Okay. How uh, how is the prediction being generated? Okay, is by using deep learning. Okay. Next thing, okay, this is probably what we have seen in the internet, okay, in social media, photo editing. Okay, first you get deep fake, which was trendy and has some controversial element in it. Okay, but deep fake is a very, I would say a very clever of, a very clever application in, uh, of deep learning. Okay, so I have a example photo there. Okay, a deep fake of Tom Cruise. Okay, you can see how real it is. Okay, so that is the power of deep learning. Okay, and second thing is uh, filters. Okay, filters in your Instagram, in your Snapchat. Right, all those filters actually uh, has some deep learning element involved in it. Okay, because how does your filter recognizes your own face, right? And how do they places all the filter elements so precisely? And that is by using deep learning. Okay, and you might argue that wait, photo editing, this is computer vision, right? Okay. And this is why I said there is a huge area of intersection between computer vision and deep learning. Okay, so basically, any applications of deep learning that involves you know images and videos, you can kind of put it in the computer vision category, right? Okay, but again, next thing I will talk about computer vision applications. Okay, so here I separate into a few. Uh, areas okay first thing is commercial okay we have uh, like an example that actually I'm using now okay background blurring or switching in video conferences okay so this is a good example of image segmentation okay so uh, in the image we have like the human right and then anything non-human is the background okay and with computer vision we can separate between those two Okay, and that's how our computer managed to like blur the background very accurately or switch to other images. Okay, the next thing we have face biometrics in smartphone. Okay, so face identification, like for example, your face ID in iPhone. Okay, using just your face to unlock your smartphone. That also involves computer vision. Okay, and then the next thing, which is also we have seen, uh, commonly okay especially during this covid time face scan thermometer okay i'm pretty sure some of you seen this before in the shopping mall okay face scan thermometer whereby you have a thermometer with a camera on it as well okay so what they do is if you pass through without scanning the thermometer okay like the thermometer will alert you right okay and when you pass through the thermometer it can uh, it, it's able to identify face very well okay of course, that involves computer vision, okay? And the next big thing that involves computer vision is self-driving car, right? How does a self-driving car navigate itself? Okay, how does it seize the environment? How does it identify obstacles? Identify obstacle, uh, obstacles? It's all using computer vision, right? Okay, next thing, we move to the medicine field, right? A medicine field, one big application is medical image analysis. Okay. So here we have an example image of tumor or abnormal tissues detection. Okay. So again, this is an application, this is an application of uh, image segmentation. Okay, you can see which pixel is the tumor, which pixel is not the tumor. Okay. So this has seen a great degree of success. Okay. Because it helps doctor like sometimes doctor might uh like misdiagnose because like maybe he couldn't like if a tumor is small, the doctor maybe might not be able to see it or like the tumor is not obvious. But of course, computer won't have such problem, right? Okay, if you if the computer have enough data, okay, it won't have this problem. Okay, so this is one huge application which is actually 
uh, getting more and more common. Okay, the next thing we have in the industry, okay, not just manufacturing, okay, in any company, check-in system, right? Pretty sure some of, maybe some of you already in a company that uses uh, face check-in uh, check system using uh, like face ID, right? So you have like, when you want to check it, you just look at the camera for a few seconds and then you, you'll be checking successfully, okay? So this is one good example of face recognition uh, with computer vision, right? Okay, and then next thing you have quality assessment, okay? Quality assessment. So after, uh, normally quality assessment is done by, you know, like manual human inspection, okay? But of course, with the implementation of computer vision, we can totally replace the human element with a computer one. Right, and computer might be more consistent compared to human. Right, okay, so part of quality assessment is what? Okay, first thing, abnormality detection. Okay, so look at the image below. So this is like one example of it. Okay, so it's able to like detect defects, detect abnormality. Okay, so all these are uh, your very, uh, not so common, but it's getting more common, these applications, okay? And in the future, I believe in every smart factory, right? This kind of system will be implemented, okay? There'll be no longer, like, in a smart factory, there'll be less and less human in it and more and more computer in it, okay? And computer will, like, slowly replace the entire factory. Okay, and this is one of the example, okay? Uh, doing quality assessment with computer vision. Right, okay. And that marks the end of uh, uh, my slides for computer vision. Okay, so next I want to show you if you are interested in deep learning and computer vision. Okay, uh, these are the few things that you can look out for. Right, okay, so I'm going to show you certain deep learning and computer vision frameworks. Okay. So if you want to learn about deep learning, okay, so the most common one is what we call the TensorFlow. Okay, TensorFlow, which is available in Python and C++ languages. Okay, so uh, if you want to learn about TensorFlow library, okay, again, just Google search about it. Okay, so TensorFlow is what is the most common one, okay, when it comes to like, if people want to learn about deep learning, right, okay. Then next we have PyTorch or Torch, Okay, so PyTorch is the Python version and Torch is like, I believe it's the C or C++ version. Okay, but I believe PyTorch is also uh, quite common because Python is very common nowadays. Okay, the third thing is uh, DL4J, Deep Learning for Java. Okay, this is a deep learning framework that uses Java languages, uh, that uses Java language. And lastly, we have the Keras, okay. Keras, which uses Python again, okay? So if you're interested, these are the few things you can look out for, okay? TensorFlow, PyTorch, Deep Learning for Java, and Keras, okay? So I believe in the future, uh, SGHRDC is going to uh, introduce some AI program, okay? And these are the few networks that we might be using, okay? So, so currently, uh, actually I myself, I'm developing uh, uh, one of the AI program, okay, which uses the DL4J, okay, Deep Learning for Java. Okay. I think there's a message. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, then the next thing to look out for is the computer vision framework, okay? Computer vision framework, uh, I would say, like you don't need to look out for other frameworks just look at OpenCV. OpenCV is so commonly used okay and it's so supported by a lot of languages okay so you can see here OpenCV supports C++, Python and Java okay so OpenCV the most common computer vision framework that you can find okay which is open source okay so all these frameworks that are listed down they are all open source means that they are free for you to use okay and some people might have some example, okay, which can just like, you know, take in, 
and try to learn it by yourself. Right? Okay, so if you are interested, these are the few things you can look out for. So lastly, before I end my presentation, any question? Right, so revision, okay. Okay, so this is true, right? Okay, the first question. Okay, we know that artificial intelligence is a cause and effect for IR 4.0, okay? So there is a great degree of influence there. Okay, so this is true. All right, so the next thing is which for following are related to computer vision? Okay, actually all four of them, right? So these are all in the slides. Okay, so image segmentation, image classification, object detection, face recognition. Okay, so which neural network is good at handling images? Okay, this one I mentioned before uh, when i talking about the three different types of neural network, okay? So artificial neural network is very primitive, not to say it's good at anything, but it's better than the traditional machine learning method, okay? The one that's good at handling image is the CNN, convolution neural network, okay? And RNN is for sequential data, okay? So which of the following are related to the limited the limitation of machine learning. So I talked about the two keywords before. Okay, so the two keywords are the limitation of traditional machine learning methods. Okay, so first feature engineering and second decision boundaries. Okay, so these two. Okay, the last question, which computer vision task is suited for medical image analysis? Okay, so just now I shown an example, right? Okay. Um, uh, x-ray scan of the brain okay so to identify like where's the tumor okay uh, we are using image segmentation uh, is there anything else that you want to add Tashin? uh yeah just like for the closing right mm -hmm. um I just uh ai itself is a huge field okay so AI is a huge field there's like very uh, it's, there are like many disciplines within the AI uh, AI field okay so just now I talk about machine learning deep learning and also computer vision okay so uh, just one uh, like a summary which is uh, first first of all deep learning and computer vision is highly related to each other okay and this is especially true for nowadays, okay? Whereby a lot of uh, computer vision architecture uses some deep learning element in it, okay? And also, a uh, second thing is just like uh, uh, both this deep learning and computer vision, all these AI fields, they are still consistently being researched and developed, okay? So maybe next day there will be like some new stuff coming in, okay? And more advanced stuff okay so all these uh we just have to remind ourselves we have to like constantly update ourselves okay just like how deep learning update by themselves okay through the through the learning processes okay so uh, i'll end my uh presentation here okay right. so uh thank you everyone for like joining in this session okay thank you katrin